Okay, just just wait for it. Wait for it. This is so cool. Look, it's it's jumping iron. Oh my gosh, so much iron. This thing has been going for about 10 minutes. We got a stack and a half. Hey guys, Profe Pablo here, Spanish teacher turned Minecraft engineer. Today, we are going to build an underground iron farm. This was at the request of one of my viewers, and uh, I'm happy to do that. First, you have to choose a place where you want your iron farm to be. It really doesn't matter because it's underground as long as it's not open ocean. Okay guys, this is what you are going to need for your build. If you want to, pause the video and write this stuff down. Now, I want you to note that a lot of the stuff you will get while mining. So, what I suggest doing is get a really nice pickaxe, uh, probably with Fortune 3 just in case you run into diamonds, and bring along with you a stack of logs. Now, I'm going to remove everything that you will probably get while mining. So, as long as you have a good pickaxe, Really, the only materials that you need to gather are these. Also, please note that you will need 105 beds, more or less, depending on how many villagers you want to have. You will also need the same number of workstations as beds. Last side note, I only put two water buckets because you can make an infinite water source by placing one water bucket here, another one there, and that way you don't have to get a bunch of water buckets for this build. Dig down to level 22. Actually make that level 20. Then start carving out blocks. And essentially this block right here is going to be the top of where you're going to carve. And you need a 25 by 25 by 12 high. This being the top one. So this will be block 12, 11, 10 you need a 25 by 25 by 12 space. So get a nice pickaxe. You're probably gonna find some diamonds, lots of iron in the process. So really, if, as long as you have a good pickaxe, you might not need too many materials to start with. I would suggest clearing this area out before you gather materials so that you know how much you have. Once you're done mining your area, go ahead and light this place up so you don't have to deal with mobs. I'm just gonna put torches all the way around. If you run into any lava places, be sure and cover that up. Okay, once you have your area well lit, go ahead and find the middle block by counting in 12 blocks from each side. Block number 13 is the middle one. So one, two, three. It should be right in the middle of the shadow lines. I found it right here by counting in 12 blocks. This is going to be the very center of the build. I'm going to skip a block here, place a block here. This is gonna be the front of my build. Grab some hoppers, place one there, one there, one there. This middle hopper is the middle of the build. Place another one there, there, there. And lastly, there, there, and there. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of torches over here. Coming out from this middle hopper, which should be pointing out, uh, because this is where your collection system is going to be, and everything else should be pointing towards that hopper or to a hopper that goes into that hopper eventually. Go ahead and count one, two, three, four, five blocks, and then place a block here. Then going into that block, place one hopper, two, three, four, five. We are going to have a sorting system here. Go ahead and break the row of blocks underneath. Like this, so that we can see what we're doing. Skip a hopper from this main collection area. Crouch, and underneath this, place a hopper going into that back dirt block or whatever it is. Place another one there. And go ahead and break those blocks. Now we're going to go one more down. And next to these hoppers, we're going to place a double chest here, 
the double chest here. And then behind these double chests, we are going to place a hopper going into those. So one hopper is pointing this way, and this hopper is pointing towards the back. Okay, here we're going to need just a little bit of redstone. Go ahead and start carving blocks away until you're three blocks this way, actually four. Grab your comparators, place one there and one there. You do not need to flip the switch. Grab redstone dust, which hopefully you got mining. Place one here, here, and actually on this last one, go ahead and carve out one more down. Place it there. I'm gonna carve out this middle row like this. Come over here where this redstone goes down. So you have one, two, three, the redstone goes down. Over on this block, break that, and then break this block right here. Place a repeater going into that block and a torch going from that block. It's basically kind of like a T. I'm gonna break these blocks and do the same thing on the other side. So redstone comes down, come to this block, break it. Repeater pointing into this block, go over here, redstone torch, there we go. Now we have an organizational system. Now in this middle hopper on the vertical row here, we need 44 items that will never pass through this organizational system. Cobblestone slabs are usually my go-to. Place one in each of these four slots then fill this last slot until it is 41. Like that. Uh, if you happen to have a poppy laying around, put a poppy in the first section. It would actually really help if you had two poppies. Basically what we're doing here is filtering out the poppies from the iron golems who are going to die. They're all gonna go in this chest right here. Come over to this hopper, do the same thing. 41 slabs go in this first spot right here. In this one, you're actually going to put string from the cats. Put two pieces of string, one goes through the system and one stays in that hopper. Now we're gonna break this block. We're going to place a dropper facing up. And another dropper facing up. Then we're gonna take whatever rocks or stones you want. Again, you probably got a ton from carving this massive area out. Break any torches that are blocking it and make a column or make a row that goes over here to the wall. Then make a trough using other blocks like this. Take a bucket of water, place it here on the back and it's going to flow towards the wall. Now go all the way until the water stops flowing. Right here. Break that. Place a hopper going into this back wall. That. Break a couple more. And here you are going to place another dropper pointing up. From here, we are going to need a little bit of redstone work. So we're gonna break some blocks, need some light. You're basically going to break some blocks in an L shape. If that's too confusing, make sure including this hopper, it's a one, two, three, four by three hole. Place a comparator, a repeater, redstone, 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 redstone. Another repeater going in there, redstone, redstone. We'll cover that up in just a minute, but while we have our redstone stuff out, let's go back over here. Do the same wiring over here. Comparator pointing out, repeater pointing out, redstone, 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 redstone going in, repeater going in, redstone, redstone. Now from here, we are going to cover up this redstone so it doesn't get wet. You crouch you can place blocks directly over those now this is going to get a little dangerous so just be ready take some dirt place it above this dropper and you are going to need to carve your way all the way up to the surface once you're up to the surface go back down if there's any 
openings that lead into caves or anything like that, like we have quite a few here, you need to cover those up with dirt or with stone so that your column goes uninterrupted all the way to the top. Take a couple buttons for water containment, place them there and there. Back at the top, take a bucket of water, place it in the hole that you just made, should go all the way down to the bottom. This is where it gets tricky in survival because you could drown, so you need to be very careful or take a water breathing potion or something like that. Now you're going to need a ton of kelp to get you all the way back to the surface, making all of these water source blocks. Plant all the way up to the surface and go back down to the bottom. Break the dirt block, which will also break the kelp. Take some soul sand and place it right on top of the dropper, making a water elevator. Now let's test this out. When we put something in here, it should pop up. Ah, uh, we need to block up this right here. Let's see, what we're going to do is break this, place another hopper right there. that. That way the items go into this hopper and we can block up the soul sand so that the items have to be forced up vertically. Let's try it now. Alright, it's working. Now whenever you want to get up to the surface, you can actually use this elevator to do so. You won't drown because of the bubble. Up here at the top, if you want to, to get this into a chest, you just create a little barrier here. Put down a chest, place a hopper in the back of that chest, go ahead and fill in the rest of the barrier so that none of the water escapes. Little secret, if you put that there and place a button, nothing gets passed. Take a water bucket, make sure that's a source block and that's a source block. And you might want to consider putting something like that so none of your items pop out. If you don't already have a way to the bottom, you might want to go ahead and dig that out. Now what you can do at the bottom of the shaft that you just dug is place some water. That's a quick way down, so to get up, you can go through your elevator. You can build some stairs if you want. Okay, so if I'm gonna use this as an elevator, I actually need to make this a little more tall. Like that. And then to get back down, I could just jump, and there's water at the bottom, so I'm safe. Okay, all that was the collection system. Now it's time for the actual build. Come over here to the side, place down a block of your choice all the way around. Again, if you've been doing this much mining, you should have plenty of blocks. Take some glass, place it all the way around like this so you can see what's going on. Then on this side, I'm actually going to place another layer of glass, kind of making a window so I can see, and then the rest I'm going to do with block. So here's your window, here's your wall, on this wall, you need to place signs. Place nine signs covering all the spots in there. Then bring up your wall one more. Grab a couple lava buckets. Conveniently, if you are down this deep, you will probably run into lava. Place one in one corner, one in the other. And then just to be safe so that none of that turns into cobblestone or obsidian with water accidents, I bring this up one more and place signs one more time. That'll keep water from spilling in. Now we are going to bring this out eight blocks. One, two. Do that on all sides. Okay, go ahead and fill those in so that it's one solid platform. 
Okay, once you've done that, go back here on this back wall and build that up one, one block. Okay, the next layer of the wall you're going to do with glass. That'll keep golems from spawning on the edge of this. Okay, come to each corner, build one, two, three blocks, one, two, one. So it's basically one, two, three, one, two, three. I find it easier just to go one, one, two, three, one, two, one, on each corner. Now find the middle block here and go over here and place five blocks in. Uh, you're basically, or maybe even six, you're trying to get a bell here as close to the middle of the build as possible without disrupting the golems. Like that. Come over here where this point is, build up one, two, three blocks. Do that on each corner. If you want to, make them a block that is easy to break, like dirt, because we are going to be breaking it later. It's a temporary platform. Connect the tops of the columns to make a square. And then fill in the square. Okay, on this part, you are going to want to place as many beds as possible. I was able to fit 105 beds. Um, you can put as many or as few as you want. Just know that uh, the more you have, the more villagers you can have, which means the faster iron golems spawn um, up to three at a time even. Uh, start breaking all the blocks underneath the beds. Careful not to break the beds themselves because they're kind of a pain to replace. I'm not liking the Enderman following me around with blocks, but it's cool. Maybe he wants to help. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. Now it's time for a place where our villagers can be. Come down here, place two blocks. No, you can even go three blocks if you want. The point is they all have to be class. And the reason they need to be class is so that no golems spawn here. If you have any gaps, go ahead and close those up. Okay, it looks like I was off in my count somewhere because this side only has two blocks. This side has three, so something's wrong, um, but it doesn't matter. As long as there's a minimum of two blocks, you should be fine. Now, I was going to build the workstations here on the outside, but I changed my mind. I want them here on the inside. So this row, you're going to exchange for workstations. That was only about 80 workstations, and remember we have 115 beds, so you can put some in the wall here. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to bring in some villagers. Uh, if you have a villager breeder, that would be great. If you don't, and you don't mind using spawn eggs, you can use spawn eggs. I'm going to do that just for this tutorial. Um, or you can just bring in a couple villagers and try and get them to uh, reproduce. If you get village idiots, they do not help, so you probably should get rid of them. You only need 10 villagers connected to a bed and working at a workstation for this to work. Then you can go ahead and place your water buckets there. Careful not to fall in your lava. There. Look, we already have a golem. There. And there. And then fill in each one of these with water. That should bring it right up to the edge of our hole. Do that on all sides. Okay, again, I must have miscalculated because my water is coming over this way, um, which is not a good sign. That means I should only have two blocks over here. This should have been extended one more. I messed up my counting. But uh, if you counted correctly, then the water comes up right to the edge. This is still going to work though. Again, once you have 10 villagers, 
golems will start spawning. Look, we got another one. But to make this thing go even faster, I'm going to fill it up with lots of villagers and see how fast we can get it to go. Let's see, I have 10. Okay, we got villagers all over the place now. Uh, what I would suggest doing is finding a part of your build. Let's see. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay, so here's my trough. So on the opposite side of the trough, I'm going to make a tunnel here and build a hole going down and put a ladder there. That way I can get up and down to check on my villagers. Ah, the Enderman helped so much. Now you just kind of come and AFK here and wait for golems to come down. We got two poppies there, two strings there, and I'm assuming that the iron made it up to the surface. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Okay, I just noticed that there's a cave opening here. If that zombie had gotten down here, uh, all my villagers would have become zombie villagers, so let's block this thing up. Okay, the number of villagers does not seem to be affecting the rates that much. I weeded some of them out. Um, it still seems to be working at about the same rate, so if you want to use less beds and less villagers, you're welcome to do that. Let's go up our elevator and see how much iron we have gotten so far. It hasn't been running that long, just maybe about five minutes. Ah, uh, now I can't get up to my elevator. Where there's a will, there's a way. Here we go, so from this shaft down here, I am going to build a ladder going up so I can get over here and get up. Okay, I have 28 pieces of iron. Our iron farm seems to be working. I'm gonna stay up here and see if I get any iron just from being on the same vertical chunk. Um, and I'll stay and stand here for a minute and see what happens. Yes, even standing up here, I'm still getting iron. So I guess as long as I'm on the same vertical chunk, I'm good to go. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, coming up here actually made the raids better. So uh, AFK up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this build of an iron farm. This has definitely been a lot of fun. Uh, very complicated. It'll take you a while to build, but it's totally worth it, especially later in the game when you need tons and tons of iron. Thanks for watching.